Can't help but smile when you hear that sound. Yes, baby talk is back and welcome to it. You're still keeping it locked right here in your feel good breakfast show. We are celebrating and bringing awareness to International Breastfeeding Week, which runs until the 7th of August. Now, the theme for World Breastfeeding Week this year is support breastfeeding for a healthier South Africa. That is exactly what we are doing today on Baby Talk with our expert guests who will be supporting moms by sharing their expert tips and their advice this morning. Now, we are joined by Sister Dariska, who is a lactation consultant and registered nurse, as well as dietitian Megan pence clates Now, if you have any questions you'd like to ask our panel, please do give us a call on 021-110-5552. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us this morning to talk about a very, you know, sometimes complicated conversation, but I'm so glad that you are here to bring your expertise advice for all the moms and all the dads watching this morning. Good morning, Jane. Hi, nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. So, I mean, uh, breastfeeding, an ongoing discussion and conversation that, as Jamie just said, can be difficult at times, um, experienced by many women, uh, can be very challenging. But you add a global pandemic to that mix as well. Now you've got anxiety and stress levels that are going through the roof. Um, so first things first, um, what do moms do if they do test COVID positive? I mean, do they still carry on breastfeeding? Yeah. Yes, Kat, it's very important um, that they do continue breastfeeding if possible. Um, if they're not too sick, if the mom is physically too sick, it is advisable then to try to express breast milk. Um, but it is very important to still continue breastfeeding because that way the mom sends all her antibodies to the baby and it protects the baby against this disease. So we must remember that. Hmm. And I, th I think that, you know, we always say that they always encourage women to breastfeed and, and we know that it's beneficial for both mothers and babies, but many women in South Africa are, are unable, you know, to breastfeed. <sighs> now, what if a woman chooses not to breastfeed, you know? What, what can be reasons of influence for these decisions? Because I know for me, personally, I really wanted to breastfeed. That's all I wanted to do because I wanted to encourage that bond, but I was not able to breastfeed. What influenced that decision for mothers? No, you know, that's a very good question and I think very relevant. In actual fact, globally, only about 40% of women exclusively breastfeed. So we've got a lot of work to do. Um, but in terms of the ability to breastfeed, about 99% of us can. Mm -hmm. However, they, like you've just said, there are certain instances that we can't. And some of them really also look at things like medical treatment. So some people are on medication and it's actually not conducive or a good idea to breastfeed. So then there has to be an alternative available. Uh, sometimes we also find that there are babies um, that have uh, metabolic disorders. Just to name is like, um, you know, some of them can't digest certain types of sugars in their body. And then, of course, also an alternative and a special type of, um, you know, uh, let's say a supplement has to be used uh, instead of breast milk. And then you get some, in, in certain instances, of course, we can't uh, forget about some mothers are perhaps still weaning themselves off illegal drugs and it's not beneficial for the baby at that point in time and they're very very real as well as in, in certain instances there might be a very low milk supply and that is more usually physiological you know they've tried everything they've done everything that's possible in terms of um, latching etc mm. but yet they still have a low uh, milk supply and in those instances of course we we then do say right you need to look at you know an alternative and I'm glad you, you mentioned that, Megan, because that leads us to our next question where even in those cases where a mom does want to breastfeed and there is supply of milk, it's just not enough. So uh, I'll start off with you first, Sister Dariska, in giving some advice on what moms can do to have more milk. So number one is feed, feed, feed. <laughs> it's a feedback, feedback mechanism. So the more the mother feeds, the more milk she should make. The brain tells the body make more milk. So that's the first thing to do. And um, you can go on a healthy diet and you can take as, lot, as much fluids as you can, but the, and rest of course. And, but the most important thing is to feed, feed, feed. If you do not feed, 
at least six to eight times or more a day, then you can't come and say, I do not have enough milk because you need to get that mechanism in place first mm -hmm. before you get to the point of, I do not have enough milk. Megan, what about you? What, what advice can you share? So, so, you know, what I, I really need to also mention is that um, I agree, particularly what's being said here. And then when we look at, you know, the environment, I think that plays a very important role mm. in terms of moms actually choosing to stop as well. Mm. And I think that's something that we as, you know, a, a community need to look at. Just to mention that sometimes you don't have the support that you're needing to continue feeding either. So when it comes to not feeding, it's important that we try and support mothers that are going back to work to continue breastfeeding as well. But if there's a, a decision to not breastfeed or if the mom actually you know uh, uh, cannot breastfeed then of course you have donor milk um, which is an option as well breast milk and alternatively you also look at uh, formula so that would be there's different options available you get the cow's milk based you get goat's milk based you get soya uh, based uh, uh, formula but I think the most important point here is always to remember to speak to your healthcare practitioner when making those choices to ensure you're making the best choice mm. for, for your baby and for yeah. yourself yes I love that you mentioned formula because some mothers do go that route mm -hmm. Let's talk about the labels. What, what information should we be looking out for on those labels if we are buying formula or switching to formula after having baby on the breast for a while? Absolutely. So if you decide to go that route, once again, speak to your healthcare practitioner. And once you've done that, then um, ensure that you, when you're walking down the aisle and you're looking at the milk, that it, firstly, you look at um, what is on the label in terms of does it indicate that it's a formula. So because people can look at certain tins and it can say uh, milk powder, that's not a formula. And it needs to indicate formula. So today we've got like a cow's milk based again, uh, we've got soya based and then come on board is your actual goat's milk based that's also come on board now, but they have to say formula and then it has to be age specific. So once you and your healthcare practitioner have made a choice, um, then go and have a look and make sure the word formula is there, make sure the, the actual formula that you've chosen is there and of course then the age specific formula. And the reason I'm saying this is because babies have specific nutritional requirements. Mm. And the formula actually has been put together and formulated, the composition is formulated to meet nutritional requirements. And these are by bodies we call codex, which actually looks, they basically look at standards and they look at what the nutritional requirements in terms of vitamins and minerals and things like that are for a baby to optimize their growth. And that is why you need to make sure that you look at those types of details when you're looking at you know, purchasing something like that. Well, wonderful advice there from Megan prince Clates, uh, of course, dietitian, as well as Dr. Dariska, posthumous lactation consultant and registered nurse, as we continue to reflect on International Breastfeeding Week, which runs until the 7th of August, the theme to which is support breastfeeding for a healthier South Africa. And I will return uh, to continue this conversation a little bit later on with these two ladies and our experts, and also reflect on some of your viewer questions regarding breastfeeding, a very, very important topic indeed. So keep it locked to your feel good breakfast show. It's my feel good breakfast show. Baby Talk on your Feel Good Breakfast show on this Wednesday morning. Thanks so much for staying with us at the start of a brand new day. We have with us Dr. Uh, um, nurse, or, uh, nurse Dariska Posthumus, uh, who's a lactation consultant and uh, registered nurse, as well as Megan Pence Clay's dietitian. We're talking about International Breastfeeding Week, which runs until the 7th of August, and we're talking about supporting breastfeeding for a healthier South Africa, understanding the complications around this issue, and sharing some advice from our experts as well. Ladies, thank you very much for sticking around with us. Now let's talk about how moms can go about and how families can go about protecting their children's health uh, during this time. Of course, we know we've got uh, a pandemic on our hands, so there's just increased stress when it comes to looking after our children. I'll start with you first, Nurse Posthumus. Okay, so definitely like all of us, limit contact with others. Okay. Try not to have the whole family coming to visit. Um, and we, we need to 
wear masks if there's anybody that's symptomatic if the mother is positive you wear a mask around the baby it's so 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 important mm -hmm. um wash hands wash hands before feeding your baby wash hands before if you are formula feeding bottle feeding expressing wash 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 hands i think we are also indoctrinated with this at the moment that it's all that we hear at the moment but it is wear your mask and um, wash your hands and then it's important to continue with your normal clinic visits your normal vaccinations you want to keep your baby healthy you want to protect them against other preventable diseases so that's for me very very important megan over to you Absolutely. And I can just add to that by saying, you know, at this time, it really is important to maximize as much as you can um, your health. And that would be don't forget to include as much variety in your diet as possible, focusing on things like your fruits and your vegetables, especially your seasonal options, um, ensuring that you're eating regularly, that you're getting out of it and exercising. All those factors, you know, help to support um, your body uh, at this time. And of course, that can play a huge role in things like Im your immune system and, and, and your health of your family. Mm -hmm. So it's once again, back to basics, but very importantly, focusing on that at this time as well. And because we've been a little bit more uh, restricted, it is important to, to try and get out there and, and just go for a regular walk um, and, and not to miss out on those, those fresh foods that we have. So I think many people have cut back quite a bit on um, you know fast food options but when you are going to make them they can be the occasional treat otherwise try to to include the the, the fruits and the vegetables the whole grains into your diet and, and regular exercise and of course hydration keep that up as well at this time Absolutely. I love what both of you said about the psychological part of breastfeeding as well, because really when you're in a time going through a world pandemic and then still trying to adapt to the new norm of now uh, being the nurturer for your child, this is also stressful and can fill mom, new moms with so much anxiety. But how can moms deal with stress during this time? Luckily, we have internet so we can have the zoom calls we can have whatsapp messages so you can at least have your village around because now we tell you keep your family separate and don't let them visit but then you're very lonely so i always say have your village have your support system have someone that you can talk to and remember that the whole world is going through this and that if you just remember it's the whole world goes through this have your support system talk to them and one day at a time this too shall pass and it will get better and it will get easier and i can just add to what sister Dorisco is saying there is that you know we actually do have telehealth sessions with people as well so you know if you're feeling stuck or you're feeling a little bit anxious contact your healthcare professional. They'll be only too keen to help you and you can do it from the, the comfort of your home. There's no issue there, so you're not alone. Wonderful. Now we've got some uh, very interesting questions that have come through via social media and the first of which comes from Dekei Grootboom who'd like to know, and a very interesting question if I remember you know, taking it back to our antenatal classes, this was one of the interesting parts of the class. But the question, how do you hold your breast in the right way when it's time to breastfeed your baby? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Can I answer that? Of course, please. So ideally, ideally, you don't even want to have to hold the breast. If you can say hello to my baby. Hello, baby. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> you hold the baby. Lots of time the baby latch themselves to the breast. People are very scared of of you have to keep the nose open and as babies can latch themselves. Okay, so for me, the most important, the best way to always latch a baby is in the cross cradle hold. So you have control over the baby. And with the other hand, I always say you hold the breast like a sandwich. So you can just help the baby to come on because sometimes they're a bit organized. Yes. But lots of time a baby just can latch on bed by themselves. They don't need much help and much force. But the sandwich grip is That's very it. important. You've got to get that down pat. Just, just seeing Dr. Dariska keep that baby sandwich. now. I'm just like, whoop. And then <laughs> baby comes Put closer. 
and latch. Look at you, you're an expert already. Well, no, no, by no means an expert, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Uh, uh, we actually have another question also from Colleen Kinshula. She said she would like to know, my little girl is still on the breast and she's almost two years old. She doesn't want to touch cow's milk at all, only in her tea. She was only sick once. Breast milk is, of course, by far the best for babies. The other question would be how to wean your baby off breast milk or formula and how to do so. Okay. So, sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and Larissa will also appreciate some input from your side. But just to say firstly that um, breast milk is much sweeter. So when it comes to just the taste um, of, of normal, you know, of, of different milk, breast milk is actually much sweeter. So that's one of the reasons. Um, and when you are going to, you know, look at obviously breastfeeding your baby until the age of at least two is really a great way to go. So well done for that. And if you're going to start, you know, weaning your, your, your baby or your toddler at this point, then remember that it's Probably a good place to start is during the day because you've probably got a night routine and a full tummy means a good night of sleep. So firstly, why uh, one of the reasons for breastfeeding and then going, uh, you know, is obviously looking at also calcium once children have started to, to eat complementary foods. So your calcium becomes important and how are you going to, to get that into, you know, uh, as an alternative. So one of the ways is to look at other options. So you could look at foods like yogurts, for example. You could also start by just having one less uh, breastfeeding time in between. And when, if you are going to be offering something uh, as an alternative, remember to use something like a sippy cup because, um, you know, it, it takes a little bit more effort to, to um, latch in terms of sucking the, for the milk. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to cause any type of confusion there. So use a, a sippy cup. And um, if you're going to choose a milk, also once again, speak to your healthcare practitioner. Very often you might want to look at a different option um, that is available on the market. Uh, you can also look at it from a calcium perspective. You, you've got your cheese, you've got your milk. So think in the lines of also adding that into something like um, a lasagna dish, for example. Um, and then when you've got your different milk options, you can then make the decision. But in terms of actually going and, you know, weaning, I think Sister Lariska can even, even give her more advice regarding, you know, the actual process. Mm -hmm. So weaning an uh, older child, so a two-year-old, is very difficult because this child is is relying and it's a comfort for this baby to be on mom's breast. So you have to get to a point where you talk to the child about it and you tell them, listen, this is the milk. You can get your milk, but only at morning when you get up or evening when you go to bed. And that's the way we're going to do it. So you slowly wean. To just go cold turkey for a baby is not always a great idea. And you don't want to cause any insecurities. The ideal would, of course, be to wait until, until the child self weans. Okay, so, yeah. um, but I know some mothers want to stop. So I would just suggest to do it gradually and with the older child, you discuss it with them. They understand more than what we think they do. Yeah. Well, ladies, thank you very much for joining us this morning and helping us keep abreast of things when it comes to breastfeeding. Uh, we're going to take just a, a quick look at some of the comments that came through from you at home when we asked the question on social media about uh, some of the advice that you would have for moms beginning their breastfeeding journey. And Susan says, feeding can sometimes be hard, but remember, it's good for your baby. It can be a real struggle to get them to drink bottle if they get used to, to the breast. Only three hard days of no breast and they drink bottle like a baby should. Oh, wow. And then Ashley says, go for it. There's so many benefits for baby and mum, and I found it to be pain-free all three times. Uh, and then finally, Josephine uh, says, breastfeed, uh, bre breastfeeding is healthy for mom and baby and is the best milk ever. There's a lot of benefits, though. Mom breastfeed, uh, she, uh, she loses those baby weight, she says, and for baby, it's healthy, all vitamins and minerals and milk. Thank you very much for those wonderful comments. And once again, thank you very much, uh, Doriska, and thank you, Megan. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on your Feel Good Breakfast, sir.